All right, welcome to this third installment of uh, Game Modeling 1 videos where I'll be demoing one of the assignments from my Intro to Modeling course. This third video, um, we'll be tackling the axe handle from the Dwarven Axe here. Um, and uh, essentially taking this on from the, uh, the rings down the bottom all the way up to the spike at the top here, neglecting any of the blade, um, as well as not doing any of the, uh, the faces or the golden filigree work here that exists on this box. All of that will be done in the second segment where I'll be tackling the blade of the axe. Okay, let's get to it. First thing I need to do is to bring my reference material here into the, um, into the software. To do that, I'll just create a reference plane, give it the right dimensions, that match the dimensions of the image. I'll go and zero out the reference plane as well, and we don't need any length segments or width segments. And now I've got a plane at the origin. I'll then just drag my reference material onto the plane. And uh, down here at the bottom, we can see this does line up quite well. But as we move along the height of the axe, eventually we're going to be off center. And I could go and rotate this image plane in order to get it to line up a little bit better. Um, but I think I'll just shift geometry around as I model instead. The next thing that I want to do um, is also maybe just to aid in the scale of this grid here, I'm just going to arbitrarily scale down my reference material a little bit, and um, this will just give me a little bit of a uh, easier time with this model. It won't be so huge in the end. I'll go and remove my modifier list, and we'll start by um, modeling these rings down at the bottom, and then we'll work our way all the way up. <clears throat> okay. Step number one, I'm going to go in and create a torus, and I'll make the torus about the right dimensions, and set up my segments so that they make a little bit more sense in terms of resolution on this asset. Converting it to an editable poly, I can then go and select the bottom half of this object, and holding shift, I'll drag it up until I've got next to nothing in terms of the gap between the two. I'll turn on my rotation, and I'll turn on my rotation snaps, and I'll just snap this to 90 degrees. I'm going to go and reposition this. It should be at 0, 0. I don't care about the Z information, as that is the height. And I'm just going to go move it down so that it better aligns itself with the next object here. The next object is going to be a cylinder. which I'll go and rotate 90 degrees as well. We'll go into our parameters. We don't need any height segments. This is going to be just a simple cylinder here. I'll bring the height out. Again, I'm going to make sure that this too is at 0 and X and Y so that it lines up with the rings. I'm also going to set the number of sides to match what I had in the rings and convert this to an editable poly as well. Go to my top view. And I'm going to go into my rotation snaps, and I'll change the degrees at which this thing rotates so that I can get a flat face here down at the bottom. Next, I'll go draw a sphere for the studs, get this to be about the right size, and again, I'll make it match in resolution everything else that I'm making. It too will get placed at the origin, or at 0 and X and 0 and Y. I'll convert it to an editable poly, and in my top view, I'll remove the back half. The front half can be brought out until it just barely penetrates within the other geometry. Using my rotation snaps again, I can hold shift and make my duplicates at 45 degrees from one another, of which there are seven copies. Next, I'll grab the cylinder and attach each of the studs to it so that I have a single solid piece, and while I'm at it, I'll remove my end gones. Because these are circular, 
I can just inset and collapse, and they're now done. The following piece is three cylinders passing through each other. Again, we want to be very careful about how much wasted topology we end up with in our scene. So I'm going to create this in a very clever way to ensure that there's nothing inside this object. First, I'll model the one on the right to ensure that it is the right size, converting it to an editable poly. Next, again, I'll ensure that it is at 0 and 0 and x and y. And I'll remove the faces. They're going to need to be removed anyway, and they're end gons. So we don't really need them. I'll select the edge from which I'll create a new linear shape. This will give me a new spline, which I can now go and select. And I'll tell this spline to render in the viewport. I'm going to make sure that it's radial. I'll adjust the size so that it better matches what I'm seeing in the image here. Maybe something like that. And I'll reduce down the number of sides on it as well, followed by removing the polygons here that are no longer necessary. So these two rows of polygons are going to end up inside this shape once it's capped. So I can simply select the edge that runs between them and delete it. Selecting the open edge, I can hold shift and collapse in order to get this down. Now, before I go any further, the shortcut that you saw that collapses things is a custom shortcut. That may not work for all of you. You may have to go over and, uh, and actually hit the collapse button over here. Um, next, I'm going to need to merge these two objects together. So I'll go back to the cylinder. I'll go back to its open edge, which currently sits in the center of that torus, which is not going to be good. I'll grab both objects, both open borders. I'll bridge them. I'll then select the edge that I don't need, the one at the center, and control backspace to remove it. I now have one single solitary object. Before I go any further, I'll clean up the smoothing groups on the outside of this object. Here's the central vertex, control, and selecting my polygons. And then I'll just grow my selection out until it encompasses the entire torus. I'll give this a smoothing group, and then I'll shrink it back down to only be the cap again. And then we'll change smoothing groups. This will give us a much cleaner, rounder looking shape and won't include the face. There's a sixth of our object. To make the other five sixths, we'll be using the symmetry modifier. I'll place a symmetry modifier on my object. I'll select the symmetry modifier to manipulate the mirror, and then I can rotate the mirror in 45 degree increments, giving me the 90 degree angle for the next one. I can add another symmetry modifier and this one, I'll rotate to give me the Z information. I now have 3 sixths, or half. Another symmetry modifier. 4. Another symmetry modifier. 5. And another symmetry modifier will give me all 6. There's wasted topology here in the top, and also in the bottom. I can remove that, place my object a little bit better in relation to the other piece, and then go in and clean up my smoothing groups. Since all six sides of this were created from a single object, all of these smoothing groups were also copied over. Here I've got the sides of this thing that run along the x-axis, and I'll just remove all their smoothing groups and add a different number in. Do the same with the front back cylinder, clear them all, give them another group, and then I don't need to edit the first one or the vertical one because it already has a different smoothing group. Just like that, that piece is now done. I'm going to grab my reference plane and shift it up. Again, to ensure that I'm sticking to the alignment here, I can grab a copy of the cylinder with the studs on it and move it into place. Now, I'll make the braided leather handle. 
For this, I'll create a cylinder. Get the dimensions to be about right. And then I'll rotate it 90 degrees. Again, ensure that it's at zero and X and Y. So that the entirety of the handle is in one straight alignment. And I'll bring this down to just above the metal cap at the bottom. I'll bring down the number of segments and then I'll increase the height until it matches the height of the handle. Next, I'll add some height segments until I have roughly square polygons. Convert this object to an editable poly and I'll remove the caps. Next, I'll select all edges. I'll then go to polygons. I'll select all polygons. Here I'll inset them by polygon. I'll inset them quite a bit and say OK and collapse. Returning back to my edges, I can remove the edges. I now have the diamond shapes. Going back to my polygons, I'll then go and bevel again by polygon and we'll decrease the number here a little bit. So I want them to get slightly smaller and give them a slight extrusion. I can grab the open border and holding shift, bring it down. I'll go and clean those smoothing groups. At the top, I'll do the same thing. I'll grab the border. Here, I'm going to hold shift and bring it out. before bringing it up, holding shift again. I'll grab my new edge at the bottom and chamfer it to give me the little rounded shape that exists in the concept. Here too, I'll grab my polygons and give them a new smoothing group. With the handle complete, I can grab a copy of one of the mixed cylinder faces with the studded cylinders and place it in the right location. I can hold shift and create a second duplicate. And using the studded cylinder, align it as closely as I can. And then I'll delete the overlapping geometry. Next, I'll select the reference image again, and this time we'll center it. In Y, I'll go and adjust its height so that again it matches my geometry. And I can create the next studded cylinder. I'll create the box area next. I'll start by creating a cylinder in the center, which will be the recess for the gem. I'll convert this to an editable poly and I'll delete the faces. I should have double checked that my edges were not as numerous. This is a carryover from the handle that was made. I'll grab the open border and in the front view, we'll just hold shift and extrude it out so that I have a flat face. Resetting the X-Worm uh, on this object will allow us to properly use the Make Planar tools. So here I've gone and made the top and bottom planar in Z. We can make the right and the left planar in X. And in fact, I can add the corner vertice planar here as well. I won't bother with this side because I'm going to end up using symmetry to create the rest of this object anyway. I'll clean up the unneeded geometry while I'm here, which removes this edge. And I'll go and set the proper height to this object so that it too 
is just barely penetrating within the first object. Both the top and at the bottom. Now, I'll continue to model the rest of the shape of this box by first extruding out using Shift and the Move tool all around the perimeter of the box. I'm going to move that object up a little bit. Not quite so much. And I'll recess this face as well. Next, I'll go and place the symmetry on to give me the other half. And I'll add a second symmetry modifier in Y to give me the back. Again, I'll clean up the unweighted geom geometry. Edges on either side. And in the center, the two little disks did not meet in the middle. So I'll bridge them and remove the edges. I now have a hole all the way through. My front view, I'll create a sphere. I'll make the number of segments on the sphere match that of the hole. I'll convert it to an edible poly. And in my left view, I'll go and detach the front as a new element. And I'll bring it up. And I'll bring the back out as well. And in order to ensure that they're in exactly the same place, I can use the type in transform to set a value of negative 20 and inversely on the other side, 20. I should also make sure that there is no gap where we can see all the way through. Also, this object should be at 0 in X and 0 in Y, as should the other object. I'll scale this up until we have just the slightest bit of penetration, and now there's no hole. This will give us... Well, that might be a little too... No, that's all right. I'm just looking at how much gap I'm getting around the hole. That looks okay. I could probably go and recess these in a little bit more to make that transition between the cube and the cylinder a little bit more obvious. Maybe instead of 20, I'll use a value of 15 to recess them. I can select the box and attach the spheres to it. Lastly, I need only adjust the pyramid piece on the top. Here I'll go make a pyramid. Try that again. I'll make a pyramid. I'll rotate onto a 90. I'll rotate to a 45. And try that again. Rotate to a 45. And now I just need to adjust the numbers. Making sure that this is a equilateral faced triangle here. Or a square bottom on the pyramid. I don't know that these triangles are equilateral. It doesn't look like it. But in the front, I'm going to ensure that, even with x-ray mode here, I get this thing to about the right location and dimensions. Again, it's not going to match the concept art perfectly, but it is pretty close. On the bottom, we'll grab this face. And here I'm going to bevel without any height, positively. Then I'll add a second bevel going down inside the main object. And I'll, whoops, once I accept that, I'll delete the polygons. There's the entirety of the handle. I'll name my object. I'll attach all of the components for it. Actually, before we attach, let's ensure that they all are at 0 and X and 0 and Y. And now I'll attach them all together to make sure that nothing is misaligned. And just like that, this component is done. 